and we're back talking about the collapse of the United States and the Western world. And this episode is centered around self-awareness or the lack thereof of self-awareness. And I think that this is one of the most interesting topics because today, more than any other time in human history, we have the capacity to be self-aware because look what I'm doing right now. I'm using a camera to record myself that I can then play back to however many people uh, you know, subscribe. I, I think I just hit 300 subscribers, which is kind of crazy to think about it, although most people have like 300,000 subscribers. To me, even 300 is, is quite a goal. But whoever watches this video, I can then have comments and feedback and I can have this interaction. I can watch the video myself, I can play it back, and I can find out what do I do? How do I speak? How do I use my body, my mannerisms? Um, saying um or right, I say right a lot, right, 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 right. I say right way too much, so I'm working on that. But again, I can have this little bit of dialogue with myself because, or this awareness with myself, because I have this camera and I am exposed. Whereas before, in the past, we didn't have cameras, we didn't even have pictures or, or, or photography, so you know, we didn't really have as much uh, of, a, of, an, of a technology to be able to access information about ourselves. We had to use other people. How did other people respond? And some people will lie to you. Oh, you look great, honey. Uh, oh yeah, you're, you're really good at that. And it's like, unless if we get into a situation where, we're, where the truth is revealed, we can live a life where things are kind of painted in a different light. So when I'm talking about self-awareness or the lack of self-awareness that we have, now some people in today's day and age, like I said, because of technology and because they're interested in that, they're at peak levels of self-awareness. They know exactly who they are, they, they double down on it, and they live their life. But what I find interesting is, especially with the youth, they have a very low level of self-awareness. And this is interesting because they tend to be the demographic of people who are on their phones a lot. They're constantly looking at their friends via video or pictures. So they have this ability to use technology like we discussed to see what's going on. They can see themselves, they can share, they're constantly commenting to each other. And so, it's, a, it's an interesting time because although they have all of this data on themselves, they aren't using it very well. And specifically, it's, it's almost like they are seeing, they're, they're kind of putting themselves out there in a certain way, but when their true self is expressed, let's just say they get angry or they, and by the way, I'm talking about, I see this most in the use. This is with everyone um, nowadays, but I, I kind of was exposed to it more with the youth. So, you know, when, when you're angry or when you have a burst of emotion, the true parts of yourself kind of come out. And this persona, this online, this, oh, the camera's on me is I'm going to change who I am because I know that might be shared with my friends or posted online. So what this has created is a disconnect between reality and the avatar of yourself online. Because most people think even if they have a legitimate Facebook account or Instagram, they believe that's me, that's my account. Yes, that's true, that, that is attached to you, but you are an individual in this space and time. A picture of you is not you. Okay? If I said, I'm going to bury a picture of you, but I'm going to have your, your, uh, your uh, carcass somewhere else, it's going to be, throw, I'm going to throw your carcass in the ocean, I'm going to bury a picture of you from your Instagram. You wouldn't say, I'm buried in that, car in, in that coffin underground. You would say, no, 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 my body, although I'm talking to you on a different plane, is somewhere else. It's in the ocean. But a picture of me, a picture of you is not you. So what's happened is, is because we have these avatars or because we have this online persona, we've created a little bit of separation, distance between the real person, who you are, and again, that online uh, persona that we want to project. And nobody wants to project a, a bad, evil, terrible person. Everyone wants to put their best foot forward. So I think there's positive in that, 
because we get to see some of the best aspects of people. Um, they, they make themselves better for the camera, right? I'm ready for my close up. Uh, you know, powder my nose, make it, you know, make yourself look as best as you can, sound as best as you can, so that you can project that best self. But what I've started to find, especially because the kids, they're always on camera, everything's always being filmed, that they're real, the true essence of who they are, they don't even know who that is. It's starting, the, the water's getting muddy with their self and the way that they are expressing that throughout in their life. And I think that is dangerous where we have to kind of filter what are one of the things that we, that we use on all of these little apps and things are filters. So there's this filter that we put on even before we put ourselves through another filter. That is, I have to be what other people want me to be, or I have to be what I think that, um, I, that other people want to be of me. When in reality, I feel like the truth is always the best. Now we should strive to be better as human beings. I don't, I don't say if you know, you're a racist or you're this or that, that you should just let all that hang out. I think that you should work on yourself. But I think the truth at the end of the day is the number one. And I think that's how we have real conversations. That's one of the reasons why I do this channel is because I wanna get the things that are in my head, the true questions and pondering and all this type of stuff, I wanna get it out there so that people can have discussions and we can talk about things on a real level. So, uh, you know, getting back to the self-realization and the understanding and the awareness of yourself. So one of the, the ways that I saw that, that, this, that this kind of behavior, again, doesn't just affect the youth, it happens to, with everyone, is when Donald Trump got elected or even pre-Donald Trump getting elected when he was running. And I used to see people, and it was a very interesting dynamic because, and I guess you could call it a projection. A lot of times people will project their own feelings onto someone else. The things, I think the things that we hate about ourselves, we hate about other people. And sometimes we don't consciously recognize that it's us that we actually are, are hating and not the other person. But what I saw with Trump was, is some people, a lot of people, who despise Donald Trump and they would say certain things about his character or the way that he would act. And they would say, I hate this about him, I hate this about him, I hate this about them. And they had those exact same characteristics. And it's very interesting, you can, again, you can call it projection or, um, you know, uh, again, that kind of self-hate, putting it on someone else and then we, you know, because we hate what we hate about ourselves and other people. We admire other things and other people that uh, we have as well. Um, but I saw that with Donald Trump where people, they were acting in their everyday life. They were a know-it-all, they were extremely arrogant, very hateful. I mean, those characteristics that some people would talk about with Donald Trump, whether you believe it, whether it's right or wrong, they were projecting those things. They would say that, I can't believe that he's doing this, this, and this. And that's their personality. I was very shocked to look at it and go, huh, interesting why you picked those characteristics when you actually project those things all the time. So this lack of self-awareness is very interesting, especially in this day and age, because again, we have so much more information on ourselves than ever before. I just watched a, a talk by uh, Patrick Bet David uh, of Valuetainment and he did this whole thing about why you should be creating content. And I talk about this all the time in the comments. I say, start a YouTube channel. I wanna, I don't just wanna listen to your comments or read your comments. I wanna listen to you speak. I wanna get to know the essence of who you are because there's multiple levels to it. And Patrick Bet David talked about, you know, he had his sister and he's older than his sister. So he had a family, right? His mom, dad, and he, it was him. And then he had a sister, which was like four or five, or I forget how many years younger than him. And they ended up finding later on in life, they found a video of taking of his, of his little baby sister. And he was so excited to watch it, but he was also more excited because he goes, hey, I was five years older than her. Where, where's the video, all the videos on me? I'm sure you guys have tons of stuff on me if you guys got it on, on her. Uh, you, you probably have a ton of stuff for me, all right? Uh, or no, it was the opposite. He was younger. So he's thinking, well, if they had it when she was uh, this age, all right, when she was born or when she was like two years old, five years later, 
easier access to technology, you should have a ton of video on me. And they go, no, we don't have any video on you. So he's kind of upset going, hey, I would have loved to see myself. Or he would, he would have loved to see his grandfather, which he didn't spend a lot of time with, or more of his father. And so years down the line, whether you do something great with social media or not, or like me, you're just getting your brain and your, your, your thoughts out there, there's value to content because someone down the line, your kids, your grandkids are gonna wanna know who you are and what you did, even if it's just for curiosity's sake. It's very fascinating to, to look back in time and we have all this access. So start creating more content. If you don't already, put it out there, share it so that not only, and maybe not even share it, but maybe just have it so that you can pass it on to your future generations. But Again, we're coming back to this self-awareness. If we have more content on ourselves, we should be more self-aware of who we are. But I find today that, yes, there are some people that are at peak form in regard to self-awareness. They really know who they are and they, they go, go along with it. And it's fantastic. Whether you love them or hate them, they are who they are. And I think you have to respect that at the end of the day. But I feel like because we always are trying to put a persona out there, we're trying to be someone that maybe other people that we think that other people want of us, or maybe we have this idea in our head about who we want to be and we put it out there. So we're losing sense of this reality. And when you have a bad day or when you're caught off guard, that, you know, that real self comes out and it might not be exactly who you think you are. And it's very interesting. So this lack of self-awareness, I think, is leading to a lack of genuineness or, or I don't know what the word would it be for a, a, a level of truth in conversation and in our interactions. And everything is kind of in this quasi lie. It's not necessarily that you're lying, but you're not giving the full truth. And I think that's dangerous because if you really want to solve a problem, if we had a problem, let's say, in our relationship, you wouldn't want to dance around the problem because you'd never solve the problem. You would just be talking about things and then the problem would just keep coming back. If you really want to solve problems like I'm talking about, the United States and the Western world is collapsing before our eyes. If we want to solve problems, we have to get to the truth of things and we have to actually talk about the real problems that are going on and our real way of dealing with them. And so the more that we dance around these things or don't give our true self or our true feelings, the harder it is that we're gonna be able to solve anything. So use technology in a way that you can get an understanding of yourself for good or for bad, that's who you are. And if you wanna improve on something, you can improve on something, but use it as a way to understand, use it as a way to understand other people. And hopefully that if we keep putting the truth out there that we will grow. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're so fascinated with social media and almost more interested in the behind the scenes things with whether that be uh, a movie play, a uh, movie star or a, a basketball player or a sports star or something like that. We're more interested in the behind the scenes because it's like, what's really going on? I think the chopped up and television and all, you know, directed perfectly stuff. It's like, we've seen that for so long, but we're, we're interested in this human, this, this reality behind things. Who are they really? You know, all these documentaries come, come out about these people and those are so popular because I feel like we have this need. Social media with snaps and, and stories and the behind the scenes day to day of everyone's life is so interesting because we wanna know about each other, but we wanna know the truth. We don't wanna know the lies or this, per, this idea or this persona that you're putting out there. We wanna know the truth. And people I think are afraid that if you put the truth out there that people aren't gonna love you they might love you, they might hate you, but your persona might be loved or might be hate as well. You can never make everybody happy. So put the truth out there, realize that we have a great opportunity for self-awareness in this day and age with technology. So use it to your advantage and hopefully we can turn the tide and instead of things collapsing, we can use this technology in a positive way to understand each other a little bit better. Until next time, I'll see you then.